Hi everyone and welcome to TFL Car. My name is Charlotte Roadcap and I am the resident chemist here at TFL. Um, I graduated my bachelor's degree in chemistry about two weeks ago from CU Boulder. Pretty excited about it. Now, using that knowledge, we decided to start a very cool new show called The Chemistry of Cars. And today it's all about airbags. The big question on everyone's mind when it comes to airbags is, can it kill you? Yes. Yes, it can. However, automakers have come very, very far since the early days of airbags and have engineered all kinds of awesome ways to make sure that they don't. The story of the airbag begins with John W. Hetrick, who was a retired industrial engineer. One day, him and his wife were driving down a country road with their seven-year-old daughter in the bench seat right between them. And what happened was they came up over the crest of a hill and in the middle of the road was a giant rock. So basically the reaction that John and his wife both had was to instinctively put their arm out where their daughter was sitting in the middle of them to prevent her from flying forward and hitting the dashboard. When Mr. Hetrick got home, the first thing he did was go straight to his drawing board and think, hey, how can I solve this problem? He thought back to 1944 when he was a naval engineer and there was an accidental release of a torpedo. Now those torpedoes were powered by compressed air. So this compressed air system was the forerunner of today's airbag. Mr. Hetrick patented the system in 1952 and as you know, you know, airbags weren't really available until the late 80s as a common feature on cars. So why the gap? Well, basically difficulties in timing and crash severity detection were the cause. The first consumer car ever available with airbags was the 1974 Oldsmobile Toronado. And they came actually not as standard, but as an option for $225. Inside your airbag, you have three different chemical components. You have sodium azide, you have potassium nitrate, and then you also have silica. And we're going to figure out how those come together to produce a whole lot of gas. So here's what happens all within, remember, 30 milliseconds, and it's pretty darn crazy. So the simplest way to explain a sensor, now there's all kinds of different types, but the most simple one is basically a magnet holding a metal ball. If this is the front of your car and you're moving forward, however, you stop suddenly, this ball is going to go forward and trigger this circuit. And when you come around, it's going to heat that little wire filament up and cause that chemical reaction to happen. Basically what happens is a little wire filament heats up sodium azide. Now sodium azide is very stable under, you know, room temperature. However, under heat, it decomposes to form sodium, just the metal, and nitrogen gas. You've produced a whole lot of gas. However, you've also produced a whole lot of sodium and sodium by itself is extremely dangerous as far as humans go. So the way you wanna get rid of that is taking the sodium that was produced in the first reaction and mixing it with potassium nitrate and then producing potassium oxide, sodium oxide, and nitrogen gas again. So again, you know, you kind of want to make these little harmful fellows a bit more friendly to the person that's going to be flying forward in the airbag. So what you want to do is you want to take your potassium oxide, mix it with your sodium oxide that was produced in this reaction, and then also mix it, mix it with silica. And then you're going to get something called alkaline silicate glass, which is basically just a simple white powder and it's not going to hurt you. So the chemist who invented all of this, his name was John Peets. So if I was a chemist working on an airbag and I wanted to figure out how much sodium azide I would need to make this pressure of five pounds per square inch inside the airbag to catch your head when you, you know, run into a light post, well, this is how you do it, through a simple mechanical analysis. These are very simple equations. Now, it should be said that an actual airbag engineer would be going through a many, 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 many more steps than what we're gonna do here. Although, you know, this just demonstrates a very cool proof of concept that you can figure this out. 
first thing you're going to want to figure out when doing the simple mechanical analysis is how fast you need the airbag to inflate. Now, the way that you do that is just through a simple approximation. Say you have this cylinder here and it starts compressed as such and then it grows 30 centimeters to come meet the driver's face before impact. To find that acceleration, what you're gonna use is just a very simple equation. Acceleration equals final velocity minus initial velocity, both of those are squared, divided by two times the distance that you need it to travel. 13,300 meters per second squared. And that's basically just saying, that's extremely fast. So the next thing you're gonna need to figure out is force. How much force is this airbag expanding with? Well, force is equal to mass times acceleration. So again, just simply plugging in the numbers that we have, you have a 2.5 kilogram airbag multiplied by your crazy fast acceleration of 13,300 meters per second squared, and you get 33,300 newtons. And just for those who aren't very familiar with units, newtons is just a simple measure of force. From acceleration, we found force. And from force, we can find the pressure needed to inflate the airbag. So pressure is equal to force divided by area. So we take the force that we found above, which is 33,300 newtons, and then just simply divide it by the area of your airbag, which is approximately, you know, 8,756 centimeters squared for a 60 liter airbag. And then that is equal to 0.3 atmospheres. So we found this pressure, right? One third of an atmosphere. What, what does that mean exactly? Well, basically, let's put it like this. That's something called gauge pressure. Let's compare this to when you check the tire pressure on your car. You have your little gauge and then you pop, there's a little fellow that pops up and it gives you a reading of the pressure inside your tire. So that little guy that pops up is expanding against atmospheric pressure. So to find the absolute pressure, you have to take the pressure outside your car plus the pressure inside your tire and then you get absolute pressure. So let's review what we know. We know that we need to create a pressure of 1.3 atmospheres. We know that we need to expand this airbag to 60 liters. We also know that the temperature at which this is going to be occurring at is room temperature, which when you convert it to the temperature that the ideal gas law needs to be calculated with is 298 Kelvin. So when you do all that, simplistically put, you get 3.2 moles. Basically, a mole is a measure of how much chemical substance there is. That's all it is. It's just an amount of something. If I have a little jar of sodium azide and I'm trying to figure out how much I need to put in, well, basically all you do is you take the number of moles that you need and then you multiply it by the weight per mole and then that is 3.2 times 65 grams per mole. And then you get 138 grams of sodium azide that I need to put in your airbag to save your life. Going back to the question of can an airbag kill you? Yes, yes it can. Because here's what's happening. You have something that weighs about eh, 2.5 kilograms coming at you at 150 to 200 miles per hour. And that creates an incredible force and that's what causes serious injury. Now, you might be thinking, well, what about the pressure inside the airbag? That plays a part, but not so much because you might think that it inflates to, you know, like 40, 50, 100 PSI, but actually you want it to be soft. So it's maximum pressure during inflation is only about five pounds per square inch. We have, you know, airbags today that can adjust inflation speed and the pressure to occupant size. So basically you have these little sensors in your seats, senses your weight, and then it can figure out, you know, what's the ideal pressure for this to inflate to, which is pretty darn cool and an excellent safety innovation. All right, guys. Well, thank you so very much for watching. I really enjoyed making this as always, and I can't wait to make more. So if you have any other cool chemistry of cars projects for me to accomplish, leave them in the comments below. Again, I'm Charlotte Redcap. Thank you so much for watching.